together series. We're so happy that you have joined us uh, throughout the summer, throughout the pandemic. And we're so excited about this final episode. Before we begin, we want to encourage you to sign up for an Adweek subscription. You can go to adweek.com slash offer to unlock unlimited access to our essential content and resources. Today, we are joined by Hey Heath, who is the global lead of the B2B Institute at LinkedIn. Happy almost September, Ty. Thank you. Happy almost September to you. It's <laughs> all of my favorite. It's my favorite season. So yes, I, I love New York in the fall. Um, but you know, it's just such a weird time. So, you know, how are you doing? How have you been processing everything that's changed and stalled and paused and evolved um, this during this time? Yeah, uh, let me just start by saying thank you so much for, for having me. It's always such a pleasure to talk and for giving this forum for all of us to connect. And I think that's what we're all needing more than anything is community. And we're all kind of learning how to do it virtually. And, you know, it's been, I can't lie, it's been real. You know, it, this has hit all of us really hard. Some of us harder than others. Or, and some of us are disproportionately impacted by what's happening. And so, I would venture to say that many folks are probably feeling a little bit weary and exhausted. Uh, but I also think that there are some, some places where we find hope, and especially when we do it together in community. Uh, for me, right? You know, yeah, it's just for me in terms of like leading my team and leading friends and colleagues through this, and I'm practicing more self care. You know, I think everyone deserves to spend a little bit more time taking care of yourself during this time. Uh, no one expects us to be superhuman as we navigate through this, you know? And I also think that we want to guard against despair and cynicism because we will, it's not going to be like this forever. It's not going to be like this yeah. forever. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think you just took some time off. You know, you get to come back refreshed and you talk about community. Um, there are lots of voices, um, emerging voices, and also thought leaders um, who have kind of, you know, risen to the top with um, their relatable topics. So in terms of the people who are, you know, on LinkedIn looking for content and inspiration, um, what are they looking for and what are they consuming? What's really resonating on LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah. I think everyone is trying to make sense of the world and including us at LinkedIn within the B2B Institute, uh, which, which by the way, let me take a step back and, de and define it. Cause some people are going to be wondering like, what is that? What's the B2B Institute? Uh, so <laughs> the B2B, B2B Institute is a think tank and we collaborate with marketers and practitioners and, and folks that are thinkers and thought leaders in the space of marketing to help, figure out how marketers can create more value and how we can accelerate business to business relationships. So that's what we do within the think tank. It's kind of like being a, a bit of an academic thought leadership, education, all of that sort of wrapped in to, into one. Uh, but like everyone else, we've been trying to make sense of the world and what people have been engaging in and searching on, on LinkedIn have been really topics around how do we move into the space of remote working? How do I invest in business continuity through this time? I mean, if you think about all the connected searches around business continuity, we've seen an increase in about 75% of, of those types of searches and over 100%, 140 something percent in terms of the engagement on those topics. So people are trying to make sense of the world. And I think in particular, what they've tried to do on LinkedIn is learn from others and look into what other people are doing and connecting conversation around how do I transition my culture? How do I uh, take care of my people, meaning employees? Uh, how do I take care of my customers? How do I take care of my leaders? How do I take care of even my shareholders during this time? So. People are looking to others to try to navigate through this time. So we're seeing searches around that, including, you know, searches on things like machine learning and data science. So people are still the trends. I think that everyone would imagine would be accelerated by what we're going through right now. Are, we're certainly seeing evidence of that being accelerated on our platform and the conversations that are taking place. 
Yeah, you talk about um, your clients and we talked about self-care. So my hope is that, you know, there's a lot more sharing among um, leaders. And of course, uh, our guest last week, a couple of weeks ago, you know, she has a LinkedIn course um, and she's teaching people about entrepreneurship. But what are, um, how do you, you know, almost become a thought leader, right? Is it simple? simply um, having expertise and sharing it. What does it take to kind of cultivate that thought leadership, especially at this time? Yeah, I think it, it certainly goes back to culture and just taking a step back. Cause I think the word thought leadership is overused in some ways and maybe not very well understood. So just sort of diving into it um, in the context of what we're dealing with within the pandemic, the idea of thought and ideas an idea generation. Uh, LinkedIn has been a place where people are, are certainly looking for ideas as to how do I transition my culture? How do I invest and prevent my team from being burned out? And we've seen content being generated there. But when you think about thought leadership, more the, the more broad definition of thought leadership, it is, it's not just creating a piece of content, right? It's the idea of thought leadership rooted in thought is the idea of idea generation and future forward thinking, future looking, having a point of view on where things will go such that it builds credibility. You become a trusted resource and therefore you can win business, you build, which fundamentally is connected to relationships and having strong relationships and trusted relationships. So it really does come from a place of trust. And we've seen people sort of investing in thought leadership around the way forward during this time and expressing that on the platform. Now, when it comes to thought leadership from the standpoint of, of marketing, beyond the creation of content, strong thought leadership involves going out into the field, having conversations with customers. It involves then thinking through ideas and debating ideas. I'll tell you, we ha within the B2B Institute, uh, we will debate, you know, an idea and it will be refined, refined through that conversation, but it's not just the internal debate of your team, it's the community around you where that you build that can help cultivate the strongest ideas and then help you define the path forward. So it's, it's beyond maybe outsourcing a piece of content to an agency, uh, or just like thinking about how you might write a post, uh, given some uh, information or some insights you have to share. It's actually doing the work of framing the idea and then taking it to market. So uh, I want to say a little bit more about that, but let me pause and see if that's making sense to you, Ko. Yeah, and it's making sense with, um, you know, one of our audience members, Ashley says, agreed, brand should keep this thought process when creating new content. And, you know, I oversee the thought leadership or opinion section of Adweek. And, um, you know, there are some similarities there. It's not, um, you know, just kind of sharing what's happening now, but really that forward looking voice um, and that credibility that comes with experience, which is really different um, right now. You know, everyone has been talking about adaptability and flexibility. So I'm curious, you know, as you continue, you know, sharing your insights, you know, what areas, you know, that thought leadership will really grow um, in, in the year to come? What are the implications, you know, for doing business and taking care of clients um, and client relationships, sales, whatnot um, in the decade to come? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we, when you think about where things are going, what we're experiencing now is not a smooth trend line transition. We've all <laughs> a jolt. This, this pandemic that we're in is kind of a, a abrupt jolt where yes. now I feel like we're in a new realm, it's a new path for us to try to define the way forward. We're dealing with different variables now. So I think that's one thing to consider as we're thinking about the direction, um, you know, for example, in the space of, of virtual, virtual connections, we're, I, we're not gonna go back in, in very many places to where we were before 
when you start thinking about remote work, the way that people sell, even the way that we are marketing. So there's a fundamental shift in, in what's happening. And that does require, you know, doing the work, going out into the community, having conversations. And, you know, what's at stake, you know, is, is what we've been dealing with in the space of thought leadership for some time. And that's the recognition that only 5% of the thought leadership is deemed to be quality thought leadership. So a lot of what we're creating is not being consumed because we're not investing enough in the things that generate high quality, strong thought leadership. So um, I just want to touch on that for just a second because mm -hmm. I, you know, as you think about how you create strong thought leadership, some of the things that we think about within the B2B Institute is, you know, is it, is the idea replicable? You know, the, the best ideas that you can generate are ideas that when you repeat them through experiment, when you think about the scientific method, they're repeatable. The most, uh, the strongest ideas are replicable. We're also looking for areas that are contrarian. And what I mean by contrarian is that I, they're little known ideas that kind of go against the grain. Because when you think about it, you can be consensus, you can create ideas that are with the crowd, contrarian against the crowd, and then you have ideas that are wrong and ideas that are right. And so when you're, when you're investing in ideas that are contrarian and right, there are ideas that are little invested in, but you can take advantage of that entire opportunity because they're, they're little known. Right. So then you get the full breadth of that space. So we're constantly looking for ideas that are contrarian because those ideas are the most valuable as well. And, you know, I there are a couple other points, but I think we're also looking for the ideas that we can build over the test of time. I think too many of us in marketing are thinking short term versus mm -hmm. long term. And brand building is, is all about thinking long term and building equity, building ideas that people return to year after year after year. One of the best known uh, what we call blockbuster franchises of all time is, is Mary Meeker's Internet Trends Report. Right. So when that report used to come out, it would totally break the Internet. So we want to start thinking about how do we create blockbuster content that's recognizable. Uh, Salesforce does this really well with their state of marketing and state of sales content that they put out. Edelman Trust Barometer is another, another example of this type of blockbuster content. Within the B2B Institute, we invest in what we call B2B trends. So these are trends that stand the test of time. We have about 30 of them to this date that we've been putting out over the course of five years. So you can find that at, at b2binstitute.org. But we recommend looking for ideas that are replicable, contrarian, and then also making sure that you're taking a blockbuster point of view. How can you create a franchise that you can build over time? Yeah, I love that um, because, you know, it's not just about um, success, but, you know, going back to the kind of scientific framework, it's proving a new hypothesis, right? And mm -hmm. having um, that little room for error and the most kind of ROI for whatever idea that you're building upon and that can change a little bit over time. But again, it's good thought leadership, as you're saying, because, you know, it can be a learning, um, living, breathing experiment for, for other brands. So um, that's a really kind of cool way to, to look at it. Um, I, I guess one of the last questions I want to ask you um, is, you know, what you're kind of looking forward to, you know, the, the positives that have come out of this time. What are you looking forward to for the rest of 2020 on a kind of personal and professional level? Yeah, yeah. So I'll start with professionals. So, you know, I, I, one of the things I'm looking forward to is just now that we've kind of gotten into a rhythm. So it was, like I said, it was a jolt. We we're all trying, like figuring out like, what do we do? How do we, how do we respond? And again, how do we take care of all of our stakeholders? So we've gotten into a, a bit of a rhythm. And so now what I'm really looking forward to is, is continuing to invest in the culture of our team. Uh, you know, what I mean, going back to the idea of thought leadership, part of the ability to generate 
strong leadership is rooted in the culture of your team. I think um, one of the fallacies that we need to overturn is this idea that there's like some genius in a tower or like in the basement somewhere <laughs> that's just probably like on their own coming up with these like fresh ideas that are just killer. Uh, and start to think about how do we do that collaboratively. So I want to invest even more deeply in this idea. Uh, actually, uh, one of the gentlemen on my team, his name is John Lombardo, definitely, definitely check him out. Um, he raised this idea called Senius. And it's, it goes against the grain of like this one genius in a tower and instead talks about genius being embedded in a broader collaborative scene where a number of people work together and sort of build and bounce ideas. We don't always agree, but that conversation, that scene is what generates the best ideas. So I'm looking forward to continuing to strengthen our, our seniors uh, within our team. So professionally, uh, I'm just kind of geeking out over what's to come um, in terms of some of the research we have coming out, uh, which you can always find at b2binstitute.org. Uh, and then, uh, personally, uh, I so I, I just spent some time with my parents, uh, which, which was really nice. I hadn't seen them since February, and so I one of the other things I'm I'm looking forward to doing is is visiting them safely um, mm -hmm. over the next couple months. And I think you know for all of us, this is a time um, what's making us slow down. It's making us pause a bit and think about the things that are most important to us. And now seems like a time more than any other time where I can get to spend a little bit more time with my parents uh, and just kind of get to know them again at, during this time. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that and also just sort of cultivating relationships. Not all of that has to happen in person. Uh, it can happen virtually, but uh, I think community is key which is why I adore what you do at Adweek. You all bring people together beautifully. Uh, you bring amazing content to help us, you know, think through and navigate these challenges. I mean, the, literally the title of this broadcast is Adweek Together. So that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Connection, you know, is so healthy and the quality connection is so beautiful. Um, uh, before I let you go, uh, I wanted to share a comment from Josh to ask you a follow-up question. So Josh sure. said, absolutely, going against the grain can be the most valuable decision for a company because it allows you to test those hypotheses one might have. Balancing that with the core philosophy of the business is the key. Um, right. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you talked about, you know, having that collaborative um, seniors, right, as, as a key in, in kind of cultivating culture. Can you elaborate on that? Does that mean yeah. everyone brings, you know, their maybe ideas from different thought leaders to the table? Is it, um, you know, approaching it in a different way? Like, what what are you doing? And I ask this because, yeah. you know, we talked about this before about how um, people are also interested in stories. So what are kind of the stories at work, right? So what's, what's yeah. the story that I'll give you an example straight from, from our team. And I don't think people talk about this enough uh, when it comes to thought leadership creation. I think, you know, many people take the approach of outsourcing the work um, before sort of debating the ideas and getting kind of rolling up your sleeves and kind of diving into customer conversations. Um, you know, but just to talk about the definition of the seniors, it is a group of people not all have don't have to have the same point of view right mm -hmm. are committed to doing the work uh you know rolling up your sleeves learning reading doing the deep work and then the ideas are then strengthened in conversation so the, so to the point of the person who just commented yes there should be it should be you know rotating around that core concept but you're looking for those ideas so you know, for example, within our team, we'll generate a few ideas and bounce them around in conversation. So most of those get killed off, but the best ideas rise to the top within a senior of thinkers within your team. You may also have some, as a part of your senior thought leaders um, and, or, or folks that are thinkers on particular topics or even outside of your team. But the point is 
that it's not just one person, you know, like I said, in a tower that's a genius. Mm -hmm. I think that's the the misconception that people have about thought leadership. It's a it's a um, it's a community generated in the, such that the best ideas move forward. The other thing I would say that we need to guard against right now is uh, because of all the distraction. You know, we're living in a time when there's so there's so much news and there's so much it's being thrown at us. It's stressful, um, but it it. It's, tough, it's difficult for us to do the deep work that's required to think and read and process ideas for yourself and ask yourself why, and why does this matter? And why would it matter to this audience? And to question that and perhaps do that with two or three other people after having done the work yourself of, pro of asking those questions. Mm -hmm. There's a great book actually um, by Cal Newport called Deep Work. And he kind of talks about how, you know, the distractions that we face today with all the technology. And I work for a social media company, but from time to time, I have to step away and almost yeah. like go into a cabin in the woods. I mean, I'm just, I'm not literally, but like I have to be away <laughs> to be able to think about those ideas. But then when you come back to your seniors and you ask the question, you know, what do you think about this idea? Does this resonate? What, what comes up for you? Um, and I think that's how we can strengthen our ideas and start to expand on that statistic I gave where, you know, only 5% of the thought leadership is truly hitting, you mm -hmm. know, maybe more, um, think a little bit differently about how we generate that. Yeah, right. Making me want to rethink the LinkedIn posts where I ask questions to try to bounce off ideas. But hopefully, hopefully the good cream rises to the top. Um, but Ty Heath uh, from the B2B Institute at LinkedIn, I do want to thank you for pausing and taking this time to, you know, share what it's been like for you and your team and, um, you know, especially for the LinkedIn audience. So thank you again so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you to our listeners and our viewers for joining us on this journey of Adby Together. We do want to remind you to sign up for an Ad Week Pro subscription so you can stay connected with us and stay connected to the content. That's at adweek.com slash offer. We do hope that you have a great September and rest of 2020 ahead where we can take pause and make great progress. For Ad Week, I'm Ko In. We're clear. Oh, Ty, I want to spend more time with you.